to the channel. Today we're going to talk about creating Power Virtual Agents topics using website FAQs. Let's go. So in today's discussion, what we're going to see is the power of AI truly realized and how, how this works is that we're going to be able to ingest FAQ frequently asked questions from a website and actually have it design essentially many topics inside of our bot which naturally will reduce the amount of effort that we have to spend building our bot. Naturally, this is a great way to get started with Power Virtual Agents if you're new to the actual service. And the reason for this is that you don't have to think about a lot of complex logic, but you can provide some real value back to your users. So for example, a lot of the bot conversations that I have at my organization is generally around how to discover information. How can you surface that up to end users in a self-service manner without them having to do a bunch of intranet searches or worst case, log a ticket with the service desk. No one wants to do that. So using a bot provides a great way to communicate policies, the locations of documents and websites. So it could be like, oh, where's the travel policy? Or what is the travel agency that we're supposed to use if we need to travel for business? And the other thing is that this is really a low barrier of entry. If you've never built bots before, if perhaps you're not overly technical, this is actually a great way to get started while actually providing a lot of value in the short term. So let's dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and build this from scratch. And just as a point of reference, what we're going to use is we're going to use the Power Automate FAQ documentation page that we can use to ingest into our bot. Now this might be scenario where maybe your end users have a lot of questions about Power Automate. There's usually questions about like who can access it, how many runs do I have, perhaps some licensing questions. So this, this provides a great opportunity to surface up some of that information to your end users. Naturally, if you've got other documentation in your organization, you should try to leverage that as well. But this is something that's universally applicable to anyone that's probably watching this video. All right, so I am logged into the Power Virtual Agents website, which is available at powerva.microsoft.com. I've signed up for a free trial, and uh, you can go ahead and do so as well if you haven't done so thus far. Now to create our bot, like I already have a, a bot that I've used in previous videos called the Currency Exchange Bot, but we're gonna create a brand new bot for this purpose. So we can click on the robot guy here, click on new bot, then we'll give it a name. going to call it Power Automate FAQ. We need to choose an environment. I've used this environment in the past, so I'm just going to continue to use it. All right, so our bot has been created. And if we head over to topics, we're going to find the out of the box topics. Now I talked about this in a previous video that was video 002 connecting Power Virtual Agents to ServiceNow. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here. Please go back and visit that video if you want more information. But what we can do is we can take advantage of this suggest topics experience. And when we click on this, it's gonna ask us for a web page. And this is the web page that contains our frequently asked questions. Now, as I mentioned in the slides, we can go ahead and use this Power Automate web page which will outline things like, what is Power Automate? What do I need to use Power Automate? What are the supported devices? What email addresses are used and so on and so forth, right? So we can take advantage of this type of question and answer documentation and include that in our bot. So I've copied the URL. I'm gonna head back over here and hit paste. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click add. Now you can add multiple web pages. Microsoft doesn't suggest adding too, too many. Uh, because you can start to create a very bloated bot. It's probably better just to do it incrementally and really focus on the topics that really interest your users. But it is something that you can scale by adding stuff after the fact. I'm now going to click start. Uh, this is going to take a few minutes, probably a couple minutes tops. So I'll pause the recording now and we'll pick it up here when it finishes. All right, our topics have now been ingested and we'll find them in the suggested tab right here. So we can go ahead and click on that tab. And then let's explore these a little bit, right? So we saw the web page previously. 
we can now see the structure of the topics. So what is Power Automate? And then basically it's going to give us a trigger phase. And then what we'll see in a few moments here is we'll actually see the conversation that that goes ahead and triggers. Now, so let's select some of these. So note that these are not in our, our bot at this point. Only the existing topics are. So these are the ones that Microsoft provides out of the box. So we have to choose which ones that we want to actually go ahead and include in our bot. So I think this one, what is Power Automate? That's probably a reasonable one to include. Let's see here. Yeah, let's figure out like from a strategy perspective, how does Power Automate fit in? What email addresses are supported? That's probably a good one. Templates, templates are popular. That's good to include. Naturally, data sources, connectors are always something that people are interested in. Let's include that. How many flows can I have? For some of those folks that uh, are really ambitious, let's include that. Can flows be turned off or disabled? That's always a topic that administrators are interested in. Uh, naturally, SharePoint is, is widely popular. Let's include that. And then let's include this last one. Does Power Automate support service accounts? So we could go ahead and include all of these if we want, but for the purpose of this video, let's keep it rather lean. Uh, this might be another scenario where if you're thinking, well, I'm missing some other topics, then perhaps you want to go add an additional source or sources, much like we went through previously. So let's now click on the existing tab and see all of the topics that were just added to our bot. Now, something to be aware of is that we can see the status is when they get moved over, they are all turned off. So let's go ahead and let's turn on this one. What is Power Automate? And we can go ahead and just try this right off the bat and just say, what is Power Automate? And there we go. We can see that the bot has responded back with essentially the answer from our FAQ web page. And then we can ask the user, well, does that answer your question? Yes or no. So let's go ahead and say yes. Now here, in that case, like that was a very specific question that had to be asked. So we can go ahead and we can actually modify this. And we can do so by clicking on the authoring canvas. And then let's go ahead and edit the trigger phases. So for example, Power Automate is a rather new branding. We could also say, what is Microsoft Flow? What is Flow? And now those will be additional trigger phrases that are included in our bot itself. So now let's go ahead and save this topic. And we can go ahead and say, what is Flow? So now it's able to associate flow with Power Automate. Now, another thing that we might want to do is let's head back to the authoring canvas. And for this conversation, for this particular topic, whenever we enter one of these phrases or something similar to them, this is the response that is going to be provided. But it doesn't mean that we have to stick with just that response. Perhaps we want to add another message. And we can go ahead and say, why don't you try it at flow.microsoft.com? So that looks good. Let's hit save. And let's go ahead and try this again. What is flow? And now we can see that we have the link and we can go ahead and actually click on that link and we head over to the Power Automate Maker Portal. So let's go and let's enhance this bot even further. So let's go back to our, what is Power Automate? Let's go to the authoring canvas. And then what we can say is we can ask a question. So we can go and say, would you like 
to see some additional power some additional power automate content. So if they want to learn more. Now in this case, we're going to keep this as a multiple choice response. We could have a variety of different options here, but I think it makes the most sense to have just a very simple yes or no. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have a with the response stored as a variable. We can now go ahead and edit this and just call this response. Just so it's cleaner, it's easier for us to understand. And then we can see that we've got these different conditions. So if the response is equal to yes, then let's send another message. And let's say, why don't you visit and let's do some shameless plugs and go ahead and give them the website or the address of my YouTube channel. Then if not, if the answer is going to be no, we can just go ahead and end the conversation and we'll, I think it's always good to end with a survey. We're going to talk about analytics in an upcoming video, but you obviously want to make sure that if you're going to deploy a bot, like there is money, there's consumption charges, that are incurred when you use this service, you want to make sure that you're getting your value from it. And probably the best way to, to be, measure that value is, is through a survey. It's one of the easiest ways of doing it. So we'll talk about that a little bit later, but this will allow us to capture that feedback. So let's go ahead, let's hit save and let's just try our bot again. We're going to ask, what is Microsoft Flow? Then we're now we're going to get prompted. And what's really nice about this experience is that we see this runtime debugger type experience. And here we're going to go ahead and say yes. And then so yeah, why don't you visit Kent Weir's YouTube channel? And there we go. If we were to finish this bot, we would essentially go through the same process that we just did with this, what is power automate topic. And we would go ahead and go through each one of these ones that we want to enable, add some additional trigger phrases, and then essentially enrich that content. You know, wherever you can provide more value, you should. And whether it's asking them if they'd like some additional content or resources, or just, you know, providing them with links to perhaps content on the internet, content on your intranet, those would be all good steps to take. So that concludes this demo. I hope you found some value in this video and how quickly you can actually use existing content and actually enable it within your bot to drive some immediate value. This does remind me a lot of Q&A Maker and I think Q&A Maker is a great service and I've done some work with it in the past with Flow but this really makes that whole experience even simpler by having it in one stop, you don't like one place, you don't actually have to go to Azure and sign up for another service and then actually have to call back through APIs, that sort of thing. This is all in one place. You have the ability to ingest it and then go ahead and enrich it and tweak it as you see fit. So I'm really excited about this. I think this is a great way to start for many people and then actually you can go ahead and extend this by reaching out to other systems, by calling flows through the call action feature, which we covered off in previous videos on my channel. Thanks for checking out this video. Really appreciate it. If you're not already doing so, please follow me on Twitter, uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, give me some comments, give me some feedback. What would you like to see? Is there any topics you'd like to see me discuss on this channel? In addition, I've got some discount codes for Udemy courses where I have training on Microsoft Flow slash Power Automate and Azure Logic Apps. So thanks again for checking this video out and we'll see you again next week when I release my next video.